Peppa, you have a cloud. I know, Mama, but what do you want from me? Great. Now I'm thundering. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Hi everyone, my name is Antonia, this is Fairy Pictures, so today we are doing a style swap challenge with Encanto and Arcane League of Legends. I have chosen Dia Peppa for our first character because she is just absolutely the fiercest character in Encanto. Change my mind, I don't think you can. So I am first going to draw her in a simplified version of her original style from the movie Encanto before trying to convert her to the style and how I think her character would exist in the Arcane series. Not only does she have the power to single-handedly destroy the world, but she's also barely holding it together and she is on the brink of a nervous breakdown from all all the emotions she has suppressed her entire life. She doesn't even have the respite of inner turmoil. Imagine what Arcane would do to her. Peppa, calm down. I'm doing my best. Yes. You're lucky it's not a parakeet. That pain that feels like it'll eat you from the inside out can either break you or forge you into something greater. <laughs> My initial sketch was leaning a little bit more towards a counselor look with the headdress and the bold gold jewelry with the electric lightning bolt earrings, but I realized somewhere during that process that the council really hates magic, so I'm pretty sure the Madrigals would be more of an undercity faction and not welcome in Piltover. So I've changed up her design a little bit and made her a little bit seedier, drew her like she was living in the undercity of Zon, which meant tattoos, bolder hair, darker, more sinister expression. And I don't think it's unreasonable to assume she would go in this direction if she was in fact in the other show. She has remarkable power. She could cause typhoons, tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, hailstorms, you name it, she could do it. She is a powerful force to be reckoned with and she is also so repressed and hasn't had the opportunity to even just feel how she feels. So I think that the moment she allows herself to feel all of those things is the moment that she lets go of all the expectations that everybody else is holding her accountable to. And you can bet Silka would be right there to try and guide her in the direction that would best benefit him and his ulterior motives. That said, I still think Silco has a leg up on Abuela because at least he cares about his child enough to choose her over the rest of the world. When Abuela lost her son, what did she do about it? She excommunicated him. We don't talk about Bruno, excuse me? My heart breaks for Bruno, but that is a topic for another video. What I want to talk about now is the effort that went into this challenge and the style study for both Encanto and Arcane, but particularly Arcane, especially for this illustration of Peppa. I'm not used to using a painterly style or lineless style, so going into this I knew right away that I was going to be pushing myself in a direction that I am not familiar with. To begin with, I knew for the hair I was going to go with much chunkier, bigger partitions and sections of hair. That is what Arcane has done with a lot of their characters, and for Peppa in particular, because of the braid, I used Jinx for a lot of my studies. And then Jinx's hair is so fine, so I had to pull some reference from Echo in Arcane to get some of that curlier, thicker hair, and I referenced Mel for all of her gold. Then I had to circle back to Vi because she has the tattoos that I needed to use for reference and I chose hers rather than the blue clouds that we see on Jinx even though that might seem like the logical conclusion to draw but with Peppa having the rainbow and the lightning bolt and the cloud and the rain and the tornado it just seemed like there was going to be too many colors and it would clash severely so I went with the singular solid color instead. There are a few spots where there is a bit of line art, particularly under the nose, around the eyes, and the clothing seems to have a little bit of a subtle outline snuck in. 
But otherwise, Arcane seems to be a pretty lineless style of art, and so I was trying really hard to do that and to also do a lot of blending with my colors. There are a significant number of hard edges, which means I should have really reverted to using the lasso tool a lot sooner than I actually did. But some of the other things that I picked up from Arcane were the way that they did the highlights in the inner corners of the eyes, the smudgy eyeliner, and of course the rim light on the outer edges of the face and hair. I struggled a little bit with the texture of the hair, especially for Petha. That just seemed like such a difficult one to imitate, so I hope I did alright. There are a few things in hindsight that I wish I had done a little bit better, particularly the teeth because I have realized that the teeth in Arcane team seem to be pretty well defined by the individual tooth. And I corrected the irises of her eyes in post, so let me know what do you guys think. Great! Now I'm thundering! I've got a new one for you. I could not have said that better myself. It is time to put an arcane character into Encanto. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that I completely skipped the sketch phase and went straight to painting in the black colors. And I got the idea to do this from an ally on Instagram, and I will link her in the description below if you want to check out some of her paintings. I chose Echo for a couple of reasons, the first being that he is just my favorite character in Arcane. I think that he is so cool, I love his mission and his vision for a better future for all of them. And I think that he just did not get nearly enough screen time in the original show, so we're going to go ahead and rectify that by adding him to Encanto. Another thing that I'm doing differently here is painting him directly onto the screenshot, which is not what I did with Peppa, and it caused so many issues trying to shoehorn her into a screenshot after the fact. So, this turned out to be a much easier process because I began with the screenshot first. But I bet you're wondering, why young Echo? Why not grown-up adult riding his hoverboard? Cool guy, Echo. Well, because this is Encanto, and they get their gifts when they are young. So I decided to go with young Echo, and naturally his gift would have something to do with speed, because Echo is all about speed. That is also going to play into some of the motifs that I add to his clothing in just a little bit. But first, I'm getting down the basic shapes. And this is about where I realized that the proportions for the children, I don't know if it's all Disney films, but definitely here in Encanto, is so funny. Their bodies and their necks are so tiny, and then their heads are so big. So I made a couple of adjustments there, moving the clothing around and trying to slim out his neck without having to start over completely. I've also partnered him here with Antonio because I'd like to think that Echo would get adopted into the Madrigals maybe by Peppa and then he also would get a door. Casita would provide him with a door and the miracle with a gift. Or at least that's how it works in my head canon. The only thing left to do is finish up the final touches here with the details in the hair before I reveal to you the full final screenshot. I hope you enjoyed this video and the style swap, and if you have any characters you would like to see drawn next, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.